Hey makers, in this video we are going to be replicating a Lichtenberg style uh, cutting board using our CNC machine and laser cutter. Now we've never done this before, but theoretically it should work. I have a good feeling about this project. I've been wanting to do it for the last couple of weeks. Um, I just never had time. I've never actually done a true Lichtenberg style wood uh, burning project. A, because I value my life. B, I do like cooked beef, but not my own. And C, I don't want to pay that much more in my insurance policy. Now, if you've ever, if you've ever done this or read about it, there's literally 34, at least at this point, uh, confirmed deaths of woodworkers from doing this and countless other injuries, including people getting severe burns in their hands and their skin and, you know, nerve damage and all this other stuff. If you actually look up a Lichtenberg scar, it's actually the, the scar that you get if you get hit by lightning and survive, looks exactly like these boards. So realistically, that should be something enough to tell you this is not something you really want to try. So for all those people that have tried it and are alive, great. Bravo, thank you. Um, but I'm just not one of those people. So what we're going to be doing is using V-Carve uh, with our CNC machine and Lightburn with our laser cutter. We're going to try two different methods to replicate this style of project and I'm going to let you guys judge at the end. So feel free to comment at the end of the video if it looks something like it or if it doesn't look anything like it at all. I don't know. Let's give it a try. What I've gone ahead and done is I've downloaded some DLAs um, as well as some lightning bolts and some cracked fractal vectors even though that Lichtenberg pattern is not technically a fractal because it's not scalable and it's definitely more random, um, we're going to essentially use a fractal pattern to mimic that Lichtenberg pattern. Now, I don't think the trunks of the actual Lichtenberg patterns in general are going to be a problem because they are fairly thick, very easy to replicate. They don't have a lot of detail. It's the little fine details that come off the trunks, you know, those microscopic electric burns that you see on some of those uh, Lichtenberg boards that I don't know we'll be able to replicate, but I'm also not sure the average person uh, who doesn't know the difference is going to be able to tell. So let's get started and we'll see what we do. Okay, so I'm here in VCarve and I'm going to go ahead and import the compilation file that I created. It's basically just a collection of all the uh, fractals and DLAs and all that stuff. Uh, and lightning bolts and cracks and stuff that I kind of found online. I want to be 100% heads up with you guys uh, and, and honest. I pulled these off of Google Images, converted them to vectors. So some of them belong to science websites, some of them could be SVG files as it is. Uh, I have no idea where they're from. I literally just pulled them off Google Images. So just be careful if you do want to use these images. I do not know if they have copyrights or ownerships on them, but I will have this compilation file available to download uh, for free, of course. Um, in the link uh, in this video description if you want to try some of this yourself. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab some uh, patterns that kind of look like that Lichtenberg pattern uh, with that, that thick trunk but not a lot of detail. So here's one that's like a cracked earth pattern. You can see that there's thick trunks and thin trunks uh, propagating. So I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward this while I format this for my piece of wood. I've already created that piece. I think it's like 34, 37 by seven and a half inches um, and I'm going to go ahead and lay these out and then we're going to take it over the CNC machine, use our carving bit and we'll go from there. So I've laid out our vector files. I've got two different styles. I've got this more uh, organic kind of looking one and I've got this cracked earth one which doesn't really look like that Lichtenberg pattern. Uh, I shouldn't say pattern, but the Lichtenberg style, this looks more, on the left, looks more like it. But I think this will still be a pretty cool substitute. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut this design into that board, uh, and then cut that board in half once we're done. And then I'll basically make two boards of that one panel. So I'm going to go ahead and use a V-carve bit. I'm going to select them, group them, and then grab our V-carve engraving toolpath. Um, we're using a 90 degree uh, bit, and we're going to start depth at zero inches. I'm going to calculate that out and see what it looks like. We're going to render it here in relative real time and see what that looks like. So you can see we've got different levels of, of depth uh, depending on how thick that trunk is, which is kind of what we want. And that piece of wood we're using is very, very thick. It's like two inches thick, so we're definitely not going to have a risk of going through the wood. And what I'm going to do after is I'm probably going to torch all this with a propane torch, not uh, anything electrical, uh, to kind of brown up and uh, the edges just to give that more of an authentic Lichtenberg effect because if you see some of these uh, done on the internet, 
Um, it, they're typically kind of have like a black kind of line around them from, from that burning pattern that hasn't been sanded off. And we're trying to replicate that as much as possible. So I'm going to go ahead, take us over to my CNC machine and get started cutting. So while the CNC is doing its thing, we're gonna come back and we're gonna work on our lasered version. Uh, for that, I'm gonna actually do two different uh, versions on the laser with light burn and our Laguna 150 watt CO2 laser. And I've got some blank cherry cutting boards here with a juice groove. Probably end up cutting the juice groove off. We'll just do the, the uh, lasering on the inside then we'll trim it up and plane it out after we fill it with resin. So I start with laying out the size of the board, uh, which is that blue line here. And I'm gonna I basically went ahead and imported a couple of our uh, DLA fractals, and then I can just trim these guys up using our square box here that I've done. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the laser kind of end just past, uh, just in the middle of the juice groove, because we're gonna end up cutting that off anyway. But I don't want to go outside the board. There's not really any reason for it. So I've created a rectangle here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off the excess with our tool here and that will give us the inside portion within the confines of the board. You can select the vector and I'm going to make it a, uh, a fill. So I'm just going to change the color and I'm going to do a fill. I'm going to set it to 100 millimeters a second. I'm going to run the laser at 80% power uh, maximum. Now uh, this is for that Laguna 150 watt laser. If you've got a more powerful laser adjust the settings accordingly. If you've got a harder wood, adjust the settings accordingly. If you've got a less powerful laser, like an 80 watt or like a Glowforge or something, you'll want to adjust those settings as well. Lower speed, higher power, whatever. You're going to have to fool around with it. But essentially, I'm going to take this over to our laser and cut it now. Next run uh, with the laser, we're going to be using a slightly smaller board. It's a walnut board. It's pre-curved uh, in like an arch shape with a juice groove. And we're going to use that uh, another DLA vector. Um, and I didn't explain what DLA was earlier, but according to the internet, DLA or diffusion limited aggregation has been studied or has been studied in two dimensions as a model of fractal growth processes such as branching, lightning, snowflakes, mineral deposits, and coral. So essentially, it's a method of uh, I guess growth for these fractals in nature. So if you actually search uh, diffusion limited aggregation or DLA vectors, DLA SVG online, you could find a lot of these files that I'm using for this. I find that looks most like that Lichtenberg uh, look or that pattern that we're going for. So I'm gonna do another one on a board like this. I've quickly brought in the model, uh, the drawing of my board in Lightburn, which again is my laser software. I've grabbed that DLA um, SVG file, the vector file, and this time I'm going to increase the power just to get it a little bit quicker uh, because that last one took quite a while to engrave on the laser. I'm going to run this one at 200 uh, millimeters per second at 100% power on that laser. Let's see how fast we can get this one done. All right, and the very last example we're gonna create is again using one of those arc-shaped uh, walnut boards to start with, and we're gonna use some 
generic SVG lightning bolts, essentially a random lightning bolt pattern that I've oriented all towards the side of the boards. So I've grabbed three different lightning bolts, pointed them all together, because in any of these, when you're laying out to the design, you have to really remember that you're going to start with an anode or a cathode or a positive or negative or whatever on each side of the piece of wood. And those, those that, that electric, electrical current is going to want to meet, it's going to come together. So in order to faithfully reproduce any of these, we want to make sure that anytime we're laying out these vectors, we're going to want them pointing to each other, that they're almost coming together to try and meet or meeting. All right. So as the very last one, we're going to cut this or rather engrave this with a laser, and then we'll get to analyzing them and filling them with epoxy so we can finally get them finished. So we're here with all five of our boards that we finished, two on the CNC, three on the laser. And just a heads up, I apologize if you want to get up and dance and maybe do a little bit of exercise routine. The gym next door has got their music cranked and the instructor's apparently on speed today. She's really loud. So if you can hear her, I apologize. I'm going to try to talk over that so you can kind of hear what I'm doing here. So we have, as I mentioned, our board one, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to go from this side to this side, explain each uh, setting and just, uh, just do a quick analysis before we fill these with resin. So this uh, board was done on our CNC using a V-carve bit, 90 degrees, and it's this half inch bit. It took about 40 minutes to cut. Uh, both these CNC pieces I took outside, I grabbed my propane torch, and I basically torched them down, uh, basically to get a, a blackened top edge, but also to make it easier uh, for this video so you can actually see them because uh, prior to blackening it, you really wouldn't have been able to see from this distance the, the kind of quality um, and the edge quality that would have come out with the CNC compared to the laser. Now, one thing I do want to mention is I believe the CNC was at a disadvantage strictly because of the tooling or the, um, the bit that I chose. Uh, this is a half inch, 90 degree bit. Obviously half inch is fairly thick. Um, and because of that, you ended up with a lot of kind of softer, more round looking um, lines and, and, uh, and surfaces on the top here, simply because this bit is so deep. As this bit goes deeper into the wood, it's obviously gonna widen the top, right? So you lose that resolution that you would have, say, on something like the laser board. These lasered ones are, you know, to be honest, I, I personally haven't seen an unfinished as in uh, uh, a Lichtenberg board without resin in it. But from pictures, this looks like, to me, a Lichtenberg uh, board before you've actually put in resin. This doesn't. Um, but again, if I used, say, this CNC bit, which has a 1 16th flat edge and it's a, half, it's a quarter inch bit, we would have been able to get much tighter, much clearer resolution, but it definitely would have taken longer. This was a 40 minute cut in the CNC. Uh, this cracked kind of earth texture was a 60 minute cut on the CNC with that bit. Using that thinner bit uh, would have probably at least doubled that time. I am happy with how they turned out and I think they will still look good, um, but I'm just not convinced uh, that using that fatter bit uh, put us at a disadvantage. Now going over to the laser designs here, we've got board number three. This is the first lasers that we did. Uh, 100 millimeters per second at 80% power, and it is a 150 watt Laguna laser. This is a cherry uh, cutting board. Uh, it's obviously glued together, and I think it looks really, really good. I think once we fill it with epoxy, it's going to look great. And these were both the DLA vector. These three here were the DLA vectors, which I personally believe, uh, just from looking at them, look most like that Lichtenberg uh, style. Um, and then the fifth board we did on the laser, I used uh, the lightning vectors, and no one is going to mistake this for a Lichtenberg board. It is just too artificial looking. Uh, it's too perfect looking. There's not a lot of striations, or really there's no striations, coming off of each individual branch of that, uh, the lightning, so to speak. It's gonna look cool being filled, but it's not going to be a faithful representation of what that Lichtenberg style's like. So either way, I'm gonna finish that. We're gonna finish all of them, fill them all with the exact same color, blue epoxy, and go from there. Before I fill them with the epoxy, I do want to mention uh, one thing. If you weren't planning on filling these with the epoxy, I don't think either of these methods is really ideal to get um, a, an accurate kind of replacement for that Lichtenberg look. I think you're only going to be able to do that with that high power, possibly near death experience <laughs> using the, the wood burning high voltage uh, transformer and stuff, which I, obviously I'm not going to do for reasons I explained earlier. Um, the laser, when it cuts, it's really, really hard to get a gradient. So it's basically flat. There's, you know, very, very little deviation 
um, in, that, uh, in that groove, it's essentially flat. You can get a gradient with a laser cutter or a laser engraver, um, either with different layers or with like a, an actual gradient and different settings, making that an image instead. It gets more complicated and definitely would take much longer. You can definitely get a gradient here because you have essentially a gradient built into that router bit, right? So you've got that V or that, or that U or whatever end on your router bit. That's going to give you that gradient. However, you don't get the burning, right? So you get the burning here with the laser. You get the blackened look. But in order to actually burn this, you physically have to take a torch and burn it. So, yeah, I would say that if you're going to be filling these with resin, I think we'll be able to get a good end result. But if you're not filling with resin, eh, it might be a little bit questionable. Anyway, I'm going to stop blabbing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some painter's tape and go around the uh, surfaces or the perimeters of each of these boards to seal them up so no resin falls off or, or little resin falls off because if we don't do that, you're just going to end up with that resin coming right off the board um, instead of staying on it. Now, I've already pre-mixed some Total Boat Maker Epoxy. It is a relatively fast-setting art resin from Total Boat and Jess Crow. It's something that I use here in the shop often because it's good for art type projects like this, as well as shallow casting or shallow pours. Not a river table epoxy, so don't use it for a river table. Um, but it is a great unit. Uh, it is a great product for something like this. So we're gonna go ahead and run this in, fast forward while I tape the rest of these up and then we'll get started pouring. So as I said, I mixed up that Total Boat Maker Poxy and I've added a pigment by Black Diamond Pigments called Caribbean Blue. So you've got that nice blue. I wanted to keep all these boards the exact same colors because I didn't want the color to affect uh, the end result. Maybe if you had a preference for a certain color, you might be, you know, oh, that board looks better because of that color. I want them to all be the same color so we can really do an apples to apples comparison. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my gloves on, I've got my spreader. We're just gonna go ahead and spread out the epoxy into all those grooves. And obviously we're gonna be able to, we're gonna to have to fill in the juice grooves here with the epoxy. We can always cut these juice grooves out with a saw after. Remember, we're gonna to have to uh, run these through the plane or at least give them a good sanding to uh, get the epoxy level with the wood. You can start to see the, the, obviously the texture coming through now. Once we start to actually give it a color difference, you can see the epoxy filling up those uh, voids. But, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, using that larger bit with a CNC put this guy, these guys at a disadvantage because they are definitely more rounded um, than a natural uh, electrical burning uh, would be. But I think they still look pretty good. And again, I think if you, unless you were kind of a, an expert in uh, wood burning and, and using electricity with the Lichtenberg method, I'm not convinced even with this profile that anyone would know the difference. And I actually think running th these through the planer uh, might actually help alleviate some of this problem uh, with the, these, the, uh, the wide profile near the upper parts of these cuts or these engravings, because obviously that planer is going to take off, you know, a sixteenth of an inch. So it's going to end up, uh, these lines are actually going to end up a little bit thinner than this. Um, because we're going to end up losing some of that top surface. So I think we'll really just have to wait and see once these boards are completely done to really make a final judgment call as to what is an effective method without the risk of death to create these Lichtenberg style boards. And as soon as I moved these guys, you can see the massive difference in resolution. You know, using the laser, it's, well, <laughs> I'd say it's sharp as a laser. I mean, really it is. It's, uh, it's a super fine point. Um, so you have quite a bit of control when it comes to detail with the laser that you may not have with the, the CNC. And we're going to go ahead and fill up that ju juice groove because we're going to, epoxy's going to run out there anyway, so why not just fill it up in advance? Um, now, heads up, guys. Uh, you know, I'm a big proponent of safety and stuff, so you'll you know, I'm doing this right now with my big garage door open and one of our fans on, I'm not wearing a, a ventilator mask, 
um, or respirator, I should say. Uh, you definitely should be using a respirator if you're working with uh, epoxy, um, you know, fumes, chemicals. Uh, same thing with using wood finishes. So I just can't talk with a microphone uh, and a respirator. If you're, if you're wondering why these boards have juice grooves, these were like a wholesale purchase um, that I made so I can do projects on the channel. Um, so basically there's like companies that sell blank wholesale cutting boards. So most of that stuff you see on Etsy that is like laser engraving cutting boards, you know, put your name or your wedding or whatever. Uh, they really just buy pre-finished cutting boards from these companies. There's a few of them. There's like wholesalecuttingboards.com and uh, Adeo Wood Products is where these guys are from. And they're in, uh, up here in Canada and Quebec. Um, but there's a lot of different places you can get, you know, wholesale, pre-finished, pre-glued boards. Um, or you could, of course, make your own or just use a solid piece of live edge for this. But this is what I had on, on hand at the time. And it was the easiest to create that project, this project with. All right, so I just used that uh, propane torch to pop some of those surface bubbles. Might have to hit it again in about half an hour just to make sure if anything else pops out of there. But otherwise, we are done for today. Uh, we're gonna let this stuff set for 12 to 24 hours. We'll come back, we'll run them all through the planer, trim a couple of them up just to make sure they're nice clean edges, run them through the router table, and we will put some finishing oil in them and we can finally see what our project actually turned out like. We'll see you soon. All right, guys, we are back after um, the weekend, and these are fully set and ready to go through our planer. What the planer is going to do is basically just level out the resin and the wood to get rid of all that excess resin that's left on top. So you're left with just the, uh, the Lichtenberg design on, uh, on the wood. And uh, once we finish them up, we can see what they finally actually look like once they're all oiled. So we're going to take it over to the planer now, run them all through, go from there. So here are our five finished Lichtenberg style boards. We've got two that we made in the CNC, three that we did in the laser. Now I've gone ahead and sanded these from 80 grit to 120 grit. I ran them through our router table to chamfer the edges or essentially round the edges. Um, and then of course I applied our Total Boat Wood Honey, which is one of our favorite finishes to use here, which is a natural oil beeswax sort of hybrid to give that, that the wood and the resin a nice pop and seal these things up. Now I want to talk about these boards individually. I honestly think that we are about 70% of the way to creating something that genuinely looks like uh, it could be a Lichtenberg authentic project. So starting over here, these are the two CNC ones. We use that V, we use the CNC with a V carve bit. We use a half inch bit, which is a little too thick. Uh, it's a 90 degree angle, but it's just a half inch bit and it's just not uh, thin enough to replicate those details. We ended up with, these are really the same uh, vectors these and these but we lost a lot of the resolution simply because of that bit width and depth as further it goes down you kind of create those wider channels whereas here with the laser we were able to really still keep that fine sharp detail and you can see those little striations coming off the smaller branches whereas here it's kind of all mauled together however i do want to say one thing as i mentioned earlier we we were kind of at a disadvantage with the laser i think that if you used a very fine bit quarter inch diameter, maybe something a little bit sharper like we talked about in the video, we could get very, very similar detail and resolution, but it would definitely take longer. The laser, you know, these were hour, maybe 45 minutes each. You know, this was 40 minutes, this is 45 minutes, but if you go to a smaller bit with a finer uh, tip, we're gonna be double, triple that time, right? So using any of these CNC or laser is not gonna be as fast as the real deal, you know, attaching your cathode and anode and just 
frying that board up. It's not going to be that fast, but it's obviously safer. So um, going over to the laser ones, as we talked about here, we have that nice fine detail, really, really good representation. I think it's similar here, but what I did notice is I think doing this in the future, if you were using a laser, you need to slow it down and turn up that power to the max to get it deeper because, you know, using the CNC, we got nice and deep, but here we didn't get a lot of depth. So this board in particular, uh, we've actually kind of lost some of that uh, resin fill that we did after running it through the planer because it was just so little to work with, right? We kind of took off part of it and that kind of ruins the effect because then you've got a broken you know, a broken section of these veins, you know, between here and here, you've got it, there's, it's completely disconnected and that does not look great. This one, of course, we, as we mentioned earlier, wasn't really going to look like that Lichtenberg style board. However, using this pattern, this laser pattern and this kind of cracked earth pattern, kind of scaling them up so you have these wider trunks to smaller trunks and then taking these, these parts of the vectors, the striations from that DLA vector that we were using, and adding them to either this or this, I think would be the winning combination. So in other words, what I'm saying is if we could kind of merge a couple of these into a master vector, a single design that had, you know, the wider trunks, but then also these fine striations, that would be a much better representation of what a real, you know, wood burned Lichtenberg board would look like. Now, as far as the technique itself, I don't think it matters whether you use a CNC or the laser. If you're using the CNC, you just need a much, much finer bit. But what I do want to mention is with the CNC units, uh, pieces rather, I did take that torch and kind of pre-torch all around the edges, uh, thinking that it would eventually come through in the end. And it did. And I think it actually looks much better. If you look close at these two boards, you can see kind of a halo or an aura or an outline, whatever you want to call it, around all that resin, like you would with a real, you know, electrically created Lichtenberg project. You've got all those kind of burn lines, so to speak, on the outside of the resin. With these laser ones, we only had the burning on the inside, which we filled with resin, so you don't see that burning anymore. So I think whether you use a CNC technique or a laser technique, take the torch and just burn the entire thing, um, basically where all the lines and the engraving is, to, to end up having something that's a little bit uh, a better representation in the end. You know, maintaining that, that black outline, I think is gonna go a long way to making it look more like an authentic Lichtenberg created piece. Otherwise, I do have all these vectors uh, as well as the V-carve and light burn files that I created with these five boards. They are zipped up and in a file for you guys to download if you want to attempt it, if you want to modify, if you want to try it yourself and fool around. If you do, I want to see it. I really do want to see if you guys can improve this technique, make it look better than I did because that's, you know, that's what we're all here for is, as makers is to help each other and kind of feed off each other, right? So I also want to know if what you guys think of these boards. Did I completely miss the mark? Do they look like crap? Um, you know, is this a bad Elvis impersonator in Vegas compared to the king himself? Is this a cheap handbag that you bought from the flea market downtown instead of the real Louis Vuitton authentic, genuine article? I don't know. Let me know what you think, and especially if you've already created Lichtenberg pieces. Are we close or are we just too far away and I shouldn't even try again? I'm going to try again, though. I'm going to make a second video where I'm going to have a, a, an updated uh, vector where I'm using the kind of merging these two designs, adding the fine striations, and then using the laser and that technique with the blowtorch to get something a little bit closer. So if you want to see that second video, I'm going to be working on it in the next couple of weeks. You're going to have to subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss it. So again, subscribe here at Make Epic Things. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. Thank you.